So welcome back to the wood shop guys. Today I am super excited because I finally get to install something in this shop that it's needed for a long time. As you can tell with these boxes here, we're going to be installing a mini split. Finally going to get some air conditioning in here. So before we go very far at all, I'm going to tell you, I by no means am an HVAC expert. I am a noob when it comes to this. I've never installed one of these, but from what I'm reading, researching, that kind of stuff, they're fairly DIY. Now you do have to have a set of AC gauges for this particular unit so you can vacuum it down as well as a vacuum pump. Uh, I don't have one, but I can get one where I work my regular job. Uh, so today we're going to be installing the main part of the unit that kind of stuff a Day or two later. I'll come back and vacuum it down. And hopefully we'll get have air conditioning going So as you can see here, I've got three boxes now two of these boxes Were basically purchased together one of them was separate. So the first box is the outdoor unit or I guess in a way you'd call it the heat pump the second smaller box here that is the part that hangs on your wall, which is the part that puts out the air, that kind of stuff. And then finally, the third box here, this was purchased separate, uh, but I knew I needed something to hang this outer piece on the wall or something to that extent. Uh, so I bought this bracket so we can get it up off the ground. Uh, and I think it's gonna work better for the location anyway. As a lot of these guys I've watched install these things, and even in the instructions, it basically tells you to mount your indoor unit, drill a hole for your, your piping and wiring and that kind of stuff, and then determine where you're going to put your outdoor unit. I'm going to kind of go in reverse of that. Uh, main reason being is just the location. And also I've heard it's not good to coil these lines up. Uh, it's better to extend them out as far as they can or at least zigzag them. I'm not sure the reason why. Either way, I'm not going to try to do anything that's going to cause any problems. Uh, but what I'm going to do is mount the outdoor unit, hook the lines, run those through a hole, and then let that kind of determine where my indoor unit's going to basically hang on the wall so I don't have really much slack of the, of the lines and the pipe and that kind of stuff. This is a heads up. I was not given this. I just purchased this with my own money. You know, it's been extremely busy in my shop here. Uh, and the heat this year has been absolutely miserable. This is something I've wanted for a long time. Expenses didn't really want to cover it. Either way, let's jump into this thing. I'll show you the contents. As you can see, I've pulled this back here. This is the outdoor unit. The copper piping, the wire comes with that too. And from what I can tell, somewhere between 13 and 16 feet on this particular unit. Uh, now this unit is a Costway brand. I know it's one of the cheaper ones and there's a lot of people out there that believes if, if you're not paying expensive prices for something, it's not going to be any good. Well, I don't have that luxury, so we're going to try this and see if it's any good. So as you can see here, some of the contents of this one, of course, like I said, the outdoor unit. You've got the piping, and as you can tell, one of these is quite larger than the other, so it's hard to get them mixed up. You're not going to stick one on the wrong spot. And this is actually the communication wire that goes from the indoor unit to the outdoor unit. And then we do have to run wiring from our breaker panel to the outdoor unit to this particular one. I did choose a 220 volt, 230 volt, whatever you want to call it. It is a 12,000 BTU, which will, at least according to the instructions, is going to be quite a bit more than I really need because... This does up to 750 square feet. Mine, my shop is about 450. So a little overkill if nothing else. Maybe it'll keep it cooler than it would have normally. Okay, so as I told you, there's two boxes for the air conditioning part. And just a heads up, if you buy this one and several others, they're basically a combined unit, but when I got them, they were in separate shipments. So I got one one day, the second one actually came almost a week later uh, and it didn't have a tracking number so i was a little bit paranoid about that part so let's get to this one so the first thing we see is the remote control that's going to control this thing some more of the wiring 
that is your drain hose from the back of this unit to drain it outside so it's not dripping in, inside your your home or your shop now this one did not come with this which as you can see i've got some adapters for those uh, ac gauges i was talking about the ones i'm going to be using are for 134a like most cars on the road today use and i'm just retrofitting them to where they'll work with this little instruction manual you definitely want to read that before you go installing this and then of course the part that hangs inside so as i opened the box wasn't paying attention i told you that was communi communication wire i was actually wrong that is the communication wire this is your actual power wire uh, basically your 220 and a ground of course So we're on day two today. Unfortunately, it did, took a little longer yesterday than I had planned. Uh, first problem being our hole saw. I did not have the correct adapter to go in here to mount a drill bit. I tried to make one work. That didn't work out. So I ended up taking a jigsaw outside, cutting the hole. And then, you know, it was not the prettiest thing. It's one reason I didn't record it, but I did get the outdoor unit hung the hole in the wall so today we're going to go ahead and hook up the lines and the communication wire now as i said before this does come with a power wire i already have an outlet wired so i'm going to just take that one loose uh, but anyway let's get these lines hooked up and the communication wire going hopefully we can get that mini split hung today this stuff right here you're supposed to put it on your threads and a friend of mine said it put it on the back side of this flare but not a not a lot it is sort of a jelly like substance so it's not going to you know we want to run away with it and it's supposed to be safe for this system too it won't contaminate anything I'm going to start with the smallest one, which is on the bottom. I'll just snug it up for now. Okay, so it took some doing. I got them both on here, and it looks like the flare is on there pretty good. So we'll go ahead and tighten these up. Now, it does recommend to use a torque wrench and a certain spec of... Uh, newton meters i don't have a torque wrench that does that uh, so we're going to use just the old adjustable wrenches and get it uh, pretty good it's kind of one of those things you get it pretty snug and just tighten it up a little bit more but either way we're going to check this when we go to letting the refrigerant in make sure we don't have any leaks And while we're out here, we're going to go ahead and wire this thing up. Now this particular unit does come with these little pieces on the ends that kind of correspond with what's up here. So it's pretty hard to screw it up. But seeing as how I can see what they are here, I'm going to go ahead and use the opposite end while looking at these. That way I've got these for inside.
So everything is installed now. I got all the lines hooked up. Finally picked up this unit from where I work. Here's the gauges and the vacuum pump itself. We're going to vacuum this down. Hopefully we have no leaks. Okay, so this thing's been running a good 30 or 40 minutes. We're going to go ahead and shut this off. Then we'll turn the pump off. And at this point, refrigerant lines just a little bit. At least a friend of mine told me to crack them, close it back, and then run around checking for leaks. And after that's set a little while, we can crack them all the way open. It has been a little bit. I've went ahead and cracked these lines. I can't find any leaks. I've sprayed it with soapy water right here. I sprayed them here and at the indoor unit. So now we can add these caps back on and take this piece loose. Now from what I've seen, once you take this loose, you'll lose just a little bit of refrigerant. So you want to take that off as quick as possible. So let me get that done. So guys, it is installed, and I don't have one of those little thermometers to tell you how cold it is, but I can tell you from being outside all day and covered in sweat, this thing is super chilly right now. I have not tried the heat function, to, but to be honest with you, I don't really plan on using the heat function. I uh, don't need my electric bill going up any higher in the winter months. I usually use a heater up here that's separate, uh, mainly for the summer months is what I'm going to be using this for. And as of right now, I've checked it. There are no leaks. It is super cold. It's working the way it's supposed to. So I am super satisfied with this thing so far. Long term will tell, you know, how durable this thing is going to be. But as for right now, I am excited. So that's going to bring us to the end of this video, guys. Now, a couple of things I wanted to go over at the end of this. First off, I had originally purchased a window unit from Amazon to go in this window you see here. Uh, it came in, I installed it. Uh, as I said previously in the video, it did blow, but it did not blow cold air. So something up there, it either needed refrigerant or something was loose. I'm not an HVAC guy, I have no idea. Uh, luckily, I got in contact with them. They did give me a refund. However, they did told me to dispose of it or donate it because they do not ship them back once they ship them to you, or at least in that case. Uh, so maybe I'll get some HVAC guy to fix that, you know, maybe donate it or sell it cheap, you know, just because they did give my money back. Uh, another thing, my shop here is made out of insulated metal panels. If you've not heard of those, basically if you see a entrance door that has a window cut out of it, mainly from the top to the bottom, uh, these panels are what's left over. A company close to where I live, sells these panels, and this is what I built my shop out of. So the entire thing is basically insulation with two sheets of metal on the inside and the outside. And the reason I say that, I don't own very many metal working tools. I'm not a metal worker. Woodworking is all I deal with, but I did order a three inch hole saw. Did not realize at the time it did not come with the adapter, which is the little drill bit in the center that lines everything up, keeps it in place. Uh, so it came in, I noticed that it didn't have that. I said, well, I've got one at home. The one I had at home does not work with that. I tried to make it work. It did not work. So I had a little bit of a fit trying to get this through. No issues with the system. It's dealing with this uh, metal. Uh, and as I told you to begin with, I didn't run my hoses outside behind the unit. I ran them over to the side and down. Uh, just in my brain, at least, that was the easiest way 
to maybe not expose the the lines and get them all weather deteriorated that kind of stuff and also coming out this right side i could point them down here and then straight into the back of the unit uh caused me less headache or at least that's so i thought but i did now have to drill up here as well for the drain line so i've done that it's not pretty it's out there and i actually took a piece of pvc pipe ran it down into that so that it drains all the way to the ground and not causing issues with my shop here so yeah that's a uh, uh i had three days in on this thing and so that's a little more than i hoped and i thought it would be i thought a one day thing but as i said it's not a problem with the unit it was because i didn't have the proper tools to cut through this metal uh, and that's one reason i say a lot of times it's worth it to buy the tools you need because you know if you're trying to do something with the improper tools, nine times out of 10, you're going to have difficulties. And I did. Uh, so this was technically day three. Anyway, I went out and got the, the hose fittings or the uh, gauge set, the, the vacuum pump, got everything hooked up, had a little issue there, uh, mainly just because of my inexperience with that kind of stuff. Uh, but either way, I called a friend of mine. We got it lined out. And like I said, I checked for leaks, no leaks. Anyway, it's installed, it's running cool, and I am super grateful for that. I appreciate it if you stuck all the way to the end of this video. I, you know, it's been a been a long work progress. It may be a short video, but it's been a long, long hard go to get this thing in here the way I want it. Uh, but either way, we made it. I appreciate you watching. If you stuck to it with me this far, uh, like, share, subscribe. We'll see you on the next video.